In this video, I'm going to go through some basics of using symmetry to simplify integration. Now, these symmetry arguments are hopefully a review for you, but it might be something that you learned, for instance, in pre-calculus and haven't actually needed to use since then. So um, I'm going to go through some basic stuff. First is the definition of what odd symmetry is and what even symmetry is. So odd symmetry, and I'm not going to necessarily write this in like a technical math way, but if you imagine your axis, and I'll be doing this for a symmetry point around zero, the idea of odd symmetry is what your values are for negative x is negative your values for positive x, right? So you can see here, uh, an example of this is just y equals x, that for negative values of x, you get the negative values for y. An example of even symmetry is when your two values, your negative and your positive x values, are actually equal. So for instance, y equals x squared. So cosine would be even symmetry, sine is odd symmetry, okay? So there's some properties here that we can then use. So if I have the integral, and right now again I'm considering a symmetric around x equals zero, right? So this is like x equals zero, this line here. So if I have the integral from negative infinity to infinity of an odd function, so f odd of x, what is that integral? Well, if we think about integrating this, you can see that the area under the curve here is negative and equal to the area under the curve here. So if, you're, if your function is symmetric around x equals zero, and you're integrating from negative infinity to infinity, or really any negative L to L, this integral is going to be equal to zero. So that's really helpful and worth knowing so that you don't have to do a whole bunch of math. You can just make the argument, this has odd symmetry, so this integration is going to be, um, give me zero. And another way you can say this is that basically your integration from negative infinity to zero of F odd of X is equal to the negative of zero to infinity f odd of x. Oops, sorry, I lost my dx. I promise I know how math works. So that negative means when you add these two regions together, you get your zero. So now if we look at our even, it works a little bit differently. And this um, identity may or may not be helpful. So if we have an even function, that we integrate from negative infinity to infinity, this is in fact going to be equal to twice the integral from zero to infinity of f even. And the reason for that will be that our integral from zero or from negative infinity to zero is the same as our integral from zero to positive infinity. So it's twice that. So that's sometimes helpful because there might be a time that you look in your integration table and you don't actually have the definition for negative infinity to infinity, you have it from zero to infinity. So one um, other thing to recognize is that we can start talking about the um, symmetry if we're multiplying functions together. So if I have an even function times an odd function, and I'm just switching from f to also use g, that when I multiply these functions together, that's going to give me odd symmetry. So this new function, if I call it h, that will in fact be odd. So why that's helpful is you can have a really complicated function here, and you can start to make some assumptions about what's going to happen. What if it's even and even? So if I have f even and g even, well, since both of those have an even symmetry, you get h even. If they're both odd, f odd, g odd. And, and here's, here's where this one is kind of the hardest. So if I take x squared and I multiply it for simplicity times x squared, that's x to the fourth. x to the fourth is also even. Well, if I have x times x, that gets me x squared. So odd times odd actually gets me back to even. So you can use this sort of relationship, but be careful because odd times odd actually gives you an even. So one example of how we can use these symmetry arguments is, for instance, if we have the function absolute value of x, right? So here we can think about breaking it apart, and the absolute value of x is going to be your positive values 
from negative infinity, sorry, to zero. So what would those positive values be, right? If your x is say negative two, absolute value of x is actually positive two. So there it's actually negative x and then dx plus zero to infinity of x dx. So in this case, we've broken it apart into two things because you might just not know what the integral of the absolute value of x is. Now, in fact, I can argue that it's an even function. Since it's an even function, I can just take this. And the other thing you could imagine doing is doing a, a substitution here where you actually show by, f by redefining what x is. So for instance, calling negative x to be u, you change this and see that it actually becomes the same thing. So we can even write that this integral is going to be equal to two, just zero to infinity of x dx, okay? So finally, recognize that we can also do this over a limited range. Here I've been talking about negative infinity to infinity since that's the most common. But I can, for instance, have something where my function, you know, maybe it's just defined this way, where it's zero to L, L over two. Uh, if, if this has that symmetry, I can make that argument that the integral of this portion is equal to the integral of that portion, if it's symmetric. And so I can just find this integral, multiply it by two to get the total integral. Similarly, if I see that it has odd symmetry around the center point, I can argue that this limited integral will also be zero. So there will be times where you maybe have a, a fairly complicated function, especially if it's a piecewise function, we can get some complicated things, and you maybe can simply say, hey, instead of doing this complicated integral, I actually have four regions that will all have the same integral, and I can just find one of those regions. So do please think about um, these symmetries and using this to simplify the math. Um, you know, do, do make it clear if you just write, you know, the integral of some function equals zero without showing work. Make it clear if you say by symmetry, because the function is odd. If it's two functions multiplied together, one is even, one is odd, say, because this times that will be an odd function, because one is odd, one is even, okay, the integral is equal to zero. So do at least write your reasoning when you're using these symmetry shortcuts, but using symmetry to, to do math to kind of, instead of doing a page of integration, say, oh, I know it's zero. That's very much a physics technique. So please, please do that.